This one is called the Russian butterfly. Prerequisites for this, you definitely should be comfortable with your jasmine because that's what we're coming from. And ideally you should be comfortable with a standard butterfly. Although you don't have to feel 100% with it, you may find that this variation of a butterfly might feel more comfortable with you. But I would say for most people, this one feels less secure than the standard one because you're using a little variation in the grip. So for this, you don't have to be super high initially. Okay. This move works on spin. This move works on static. Like many moves, if you are less comfortable on spin, I highly recommend that you start with it on static and get comfortable for the feel of it before you take it to spin. As far as whether it's better or same on spin, it's different for everyone. Okay. Kind of my general rule of thumb is if you are comfortable with spin, it's not going to make much of a difference whether you do this move on spin or static. If spin sometimes throws you around a little bit, this move might feel a little bit off on spin, okay? So for this, you're going to go to a jasmine. You can invert up into it, drop down into it, whichever. I'm going to be demoing on spin just so that you can kind of see it from all the angles, okay? So into a jasmine. From here, the top arm is going to go palm to face and thread through at your crotch until you get all the way to your elbow. From here, ideally this is gonna happen in one motion. You're gonna slide your bottom arm as you swing your bottom leg up and around. The top arm and leg are also going to rotate. To come out, you can come back to that jasmine and swing your arm or slip your arm out. Okay, so biggest thing with this, and this is the part where a lot of people have a harder time with this variation of a butterfly versus the more standard one, is that initially your arm and your leg are horizontal-ish. And because we don't have the same hand grip as we do in a more traditional butterfly or the one that most people learn first, you don't have the same sense of control, depending on how comfortable you are with elbows. Personally, I love elbows, but I didn't start out that way. Initially in pull, elbows scared me, right? Because we don't use our elbows as much in our general everyday life. So for this one, initially that arm is gonna be through to your elbow pit and you're going to pivot till it gets vertical. This grip on the bottom hand don't overthink it, whatever feels best for you. I would say, um, generally speaking, I don't do a cup. It usually ends up as a true grip with the fingers and thumb on opposite side or some kind of variation of a claw, okay? So don't worry too much about how many fingers are on one side, how many fingers are on the other, what other, whatever feels most comfortable to you. But what is important is that you get this wrapping feeling here because this is what's gonna help give you your stability once you get into that Russian butterfly inverted position is the fact that your arm is on one side and your hand is on the other and they have this push-pull, okay? Kind of like the same idea when we're in a climb, how we kind of feel that push-pull. That's what gives us our stability, okay? That top leg, the one that was the bent leg in the jasmine, really important. That leg also, much like the arm, has to go from roughly horizontal to pivot until it's pretty much vertical. And you're gonna have that same sort of bracing angle in that your knee's gonna be to one side, your ankles to the other, and you're gonna feel this push and pull. That's what's gonna give you stability in this move. Okay, I would find, I, or I do find quite often with this, just out of fear, because you know, new moves are scary sometimes, is that people don't pivot that top leg enough and they end up stopping somewhere here because it feels scary. Know this, and this is where you know, having someone to spot you through it the first time is always nice. Having someone spot you so that you commit to that full vertical, you'll feel safer once you're there, okay? So just know that. If you kind of stop partway and you're like, oh gosh, it feels a little bit unstable, it could be that just going two more inches, it's not gonna feel worse, it's actually gonna feel better, okay? So timing of all of this. I find if you try to move arm and leg at a different time, I know mentally sometimes that's easier for us so we're not having to multitask so much, but as far as getting into this move, I do find it's harder because the momentum of kind of swinging that bottom leg as you drop your head and pivot your arm and leg at the same time, I know that is a lot going on all at the same time, helps get into the move, okay? Because with this move, we don't have the same pulling power that we have in the more traditional butterfly, okay? So with all of these things in mind,
let's look at it again. Um, the free leg, it can be bent or straight. Personal preference, just like with a regular butterfly, you can decide whether you want that leg bent, whether you want that leg straight, whichever. Okay, so from your jasmine, get into your jasmine however you want to. From the jasmine, that top arm, palm to face, sneak it between your legs so it comes all the way to that bicep um, at the elbow pit. When you're ready, you're gonna swing the bottom leg, at arm, <laughs> can't talk, you're gonna swing the bottom leg as you pivot the top arm and leg from horizontal to vertical. Okay, the bottom arm I'm pushing out of to come out, swing back to your jasmine, and then you can free that arm to come out and carry on your merry way to wherever you want to go. The bottom arm, that's the last little tidbit of this that we haven't really talked about. That arm should be straight the same way it should be in a butterfly or handspring. You're gonna feel more stable in this the more you push out of that shoulder, okay? Spacing of your arms. I think of in this much like with a regular butterfly or with a handspring, the farther apart your arms are without your chest touching, the more control you're gonna have over this move because it gives you a wider base of support. If for some reason your chest is touching, either A, you happen to slide your arm too far, you have a bigger chest, you have an archy back, it's not wrong, it's just a variation, but think of your kind of rule of thumb and your goal is to get to where your chest is close but not touching. But of course, like all pole moves, there's gonna be variations to this. So make sure when you go through this transition, that bottom arm, it might need to slide depending on where it started in the jasmine. But as you drop it down, you're pushing out of it. You're not collapsing into it, okay? So this is the Russian butterfly variation. Try it out, try it on static, try it on spin, whatever feels best to you. If it's feeling comfortable, try putting it together with some of your favorite moves and put it into a combo. The challenge is, 30 to 60 seconds of continuous movement, basically an entire pull pass. Your pull pass starts from the moment your feet get, well, actually your feet don't have to leave the floor to start a pull pass. From the moment you touch the pole, going up and then coming back down to finish your movement, okay? So there's your challenge, should you choose to accept it? I'd love to see your Russian butterflies. Let me know how it goes.